Praise God. I remember those days that we used to uh, go for evangelism in Nigeria. When we go, and I have a team, I was the leader of that team that I normally go out with, and we go out, and sometimes, I don't know, that time they, they well, I come from a church where the people bless, praise God. And they just feel that, you know, after prayer, there's a prophetic word that ministers to them. I want to go, and they just, ah, pastor, they used to call me pastor, I was not a pastor, praise God. Sir, Pastor, please take this one. Ah, no, 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 we are not. We just get, ah, no, please. There's something you say. And they give their testimony. Praise God. Hallelujah. And they force me to take. And I'll tell the secretary that I go with. I say, okay, please, thank you very much. God bless you. Give it. Praise God. One day, jokingly, the secretary said, ah. But I guess, ah, we'll, we'll go for evangelism. You know you are a prophet. Praise God. <laughs> ah, so that something will come out. Of. Praise God. I said, we are not going out because of this. Praise God. And there were cases where I rejected. I just said no. Praise God. You, you, holiness become thy house, oh God. If you become something else, we collect everything that comes your way. No restriction. Holiness will not let you take advantage of anybody. Praise God. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26. Leviticus 20, 26. And ye shall be holy unto me. For I, the Lord, I am holy, and have severed you from other people, that you should be mine. Holiness, begin, it, it establish you as one that God owns. God owns you. Can I hear an amen? amen? That is what tell God that you are my own. Holiness becoming. He said, be ye holy as I am holy. But as ye which have called you holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Have a lifestyle of holiness. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 15. Praise the Lord. So be ye holy as I am holy. What leads to holiness is sanctification. Until you are sanctified, you can't be holy. So Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 7 says, Sanctify yourself therefore and be ye holy. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 7. Leviticus 27. Sanctify yourself therefore and be holy for I am holy. I am the Lord your God. Can I hear an amen? amen? Number five, boldness and confidence. When you go out for evangelism, you must be holy. You must be holy. You must uh, be given. And you must be visiting people. You must be merciful. And now I want to talk about being bold and being confident. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 12. Ephesians 3, 12. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. In Christ we have boldness. Say with me. In Christ I have boldness. Please say it with confidence. In Christ I have boldness. In Christ I have confidence. Yeah, you have it. So we must reach out to people. Don't be shy to reach out to people. Don't be shy to speak to somebody. Be bold and be confident. Understand what you want to say. Say it and be sure you are saying the right thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you are shy and you are not bold, how would you go out to speak to somebody you don't know? If Jesus was not bold, he would not meet that woman at the well. Praise God. He was bold, he was confident, and was speaking to her as if he had known her for a long time. We need that skill. When the disciples came, they were surprised that Jesus was talking to a woman. I don't know what they were surprised. That Jesus was, is it a sin for Jesus to speak to a woman? Or that Jesus is not used to speaking to a woman? God has not given us the spirit of timidity but the spirit of boldness and of a sound mind. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And finally, the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we went out here 
and gear the people up to go out to evangelize. Some that went out with us were still in the street doing this uh, um, into drugs. Praise God. And they went. And as they reached out, the people who knew them began to say, you, you that is a, uh, we know you now. Praise God. And then we came here analyzing, uh, you know, what our experience was. And then one of them mentioned and said, see what people are saying. When you are trying to talk to this person and say, look, come to church and everything, they just look at you because they know what you are doing. Praise God. Your lifestyle preaches louder than any words you want to say to anybody. What you see, people don't doubt. What you say can be doubted. Hallelujah. Until you are truly changed. The Holy Spirit is the one that changes your personality. He is the one that can transform you. Be it transformed by the renewal of your mind. You, you can't, until you are born again, going out to save souls, you are putting yourself in danger. You must be saved and you must be filled with the Holy Ghost. He must be living inside of you. Hallelujah. Yeah. What the Holy Ghost does is to empower you. He told them to tarry in Jerusalem until they be endued with power. Wait, don't go out yet. Luke chapter 24 and verse 19. Luke chapter 24 and verse 49 rather. Luke 24 49. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power on high. And you and I know that was the promise of the father was the Holy Spirit. That was the power of God wants you to be empowered to go out. Not to go out unempowered. That's why we pray before we go. That we prepare ourselves. That will ask from the Holy Spirit to empower us. Hallelujah. In John chapter 15 and verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine, and ye are the branch. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So you need him. Jesus Christ said, it is expedient that I go. If I do not go, the comforter will not come. The promise of the Father will not come. Your empowerment will not come. My going is supposed to empower you. Wait in Jerusalem until that power comes upon you. Then you can go out. And as soon as that happened, they went out and they took this world by storm. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will take this world for Christ. Amen. Can I hear a better? Amen. Amen. You need to take the word. It's not enough. You need the Holy Spirit before you go out. Hallelujah. Amen. You need an empowerment. So that when you meet somebody who is sick, you are able to pray for the person. The person receives strength. Not of you, but the power of God. Can I hear an amen? amen. But if you go and talk and talk, talk is cheap. Praise God. Talk is cheap. But that's not what the world wants. The world wants to see signs and wonders. They want to see a proof that something is working in you. Before Moses had to go where God sent him, he said, how would they know that you are the one that sent me? He said, what is that in your hand? He said, Rod, put it down. And he became a serpent. God began to show him signs and wonders that he's going to use when he goes. And that empowered him to go and meet Pharaoh again. The place he was running away, he was able to go there, but he did. The same Moses who left is not the same that is returning. He was now empowered. He could do signs and wonders in the name of the Lord. It is my prayer that with these words and with this uh, virtue of boldness, of the Holy Ghost empowerment, with the ability for you to give with your willingness to go out and visit 
and your attitude of mercy, your soul winning lifestyle will be resultful Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your voice and begin to thank the Lord for the word that you have received now. Go ahead and thank him. Thank him he has spoken to you. Go ahead and thank him with a loud voice. With a loud voice. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord for the word I have received. Glory and honor and praise be unto you. I give you praise. Be thou exalted, be magnified, and be glorified in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. I'd like you to pray this prayer. We have talked about mercy. We have talked about visiting. We have talked about the Holy Ghost. We have talked about giving. Hallelujah. We spoke about all these things. I want you to pray for yourself. Amen. Amen. If you think you have any, any of these things, you need to pray that God should magnify it. That God will, uh, will give you the ability, boldness, to begin to go out in the strength of this truth and this mystery that God has revealed to you. Lift up your voice and begin to speak to him. Lord, give me the grace to visit and let my visit be resultful. In the name of Jesus, Father, grant me the spirit of boldness and of a sound man, give me the grace to be confident to go out in your name. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be a giver. To be giver. For God so loved the world that he gave. Father, help me to be a giver. Help me not to relent in giving. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help me to be merciful. Help me to be merciful in soul winning. Help me to be merciful in my going out and my coming in. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, help me to walk in holiness. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, give me, Lord God, the empowerment by the Holy Ghost that anyone I met, oh, I meet, oh God, help me, Lord God, to manifest the power of God. For the word of God, we don't did not come with a, a exciting word of man, but the demonstration of power. Help me to be an agent of the demonstration of your power in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Holy Ghost, tear me up to do your will and glorify yourself. Help me to be resourceful in soul winning. Help me to win souls in your name. That Lord, I might you might be pleased with me. In the name of Jesus, help me to hear your glorious voice. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Lord, be well pleased with me, O oh God, as you walk in me in soul winning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God. Lift up your voice and begin to give God thanks.